Are Democrats destroying what was shaping up to be a really huge blue wave? The approaching caravan has put the focus back on immigration, an issue the Democrats have completely ceded to the president, as far as I can tell. And the Kavanaugh battle revealed the less shameless tactics and the calls, of course, uh, for incivility uh, from Eric Holder, Cory Booker, Hillary Clinton. Well, they show they care more about promoting anger than solving problems. Kick them when they're down. Joining us now to discuss, Victor Davis Hanson, senior fellow at the Hoover Institution. All right, Victor, it's great to have you with us tonight. What do you make of the recent political calculations we've seen from the Democrats, many of them, of course, with 2020 ambitions? Yeah, it's almost like they're wolves in wolves' clothing. I thought that they would at least try to disguise their empathies and, and uh, politics before the midterm, but you're just, your past segment about white this and white this and white supremacy and white women, that this is at a time after the 2016 lessons that you should be appealing to the white working class if you want to win those states, and yet they're not doing that. We saw during the Kavanaugh hearings, why not uh, protect American jurisprudence? We all support due process. But when we got done with that circus, it was the, as if the Democrats wanted to be on the side of the French Revolution. And then when we had all of these demonstrations, Antifa and scratching like maenads on the Supreme Court doors, you would think that somebody in the party would speak up against that. But instead, if you collate what Cory Booker said or what Eric Holder said or even Hillary Clinton, it was almost as if these people were seen as a para, uh, the paramilitary wing of the Democratic Party. And then, you know, the height of silliness, why now would Elizabeth Warren come out when you have this high profile uh, trial of uh, suit by Asian Americans against Harvard in the same city and then s proclaim that she's 1%, maybe 1% at best, and therefore mm -hmm. all along really was a genuine yeah. minority. She should have apologized. And so now, and then it's all topped off by this caravan. And what are the Democrats going to do? Are they going to get out and say, let them in because they have a right for refugee appeals or something? Anybody knows in their right mind that you can't have a nation when people storm across the southern border by intent and they're empowered well, by the huge, Mexican government. It's a government. huge plus so for this. All yeah, of these it's issues. Plus. It's a huge plus yeah. for the Republicans, Victor. The president yeah. is so far ahead of everybody else on this issue of immigration. Uh, all the other politicians. He sees it. He knows it's a problem. He wants to fix it. He's very frustrated with Congress, as he should he be. Um, I also want to talk about foreign policy, uh, Victor. That's really your, your forte yeah. in many ways. This uh, Khashoggi murder at the, uh, at the consulate in Turkey, the Saudi consulate, there are actually liberals blaming this on somehow on the chaotic foreign policy of President Trump. And he addressed the general issue tonight with Trish Regan. Let's watch. And you'll start hearing what is happening. Turkey's looking at it very strongly. We're all looking at it together, but Turkey and Saudi Arabia are looking at it very strongly. And it depends whether or not the king or the crown prince knew about it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Number one, what happened, but whether or not they knew about it. If they knew about it, that would be bad. I don't think most American voters, I mean, aside from, you know, the barbarity of this, uh, the American voters, this is not, this do, isn't the issue that, you know, motivates them election time. It might be something we have to deal with, but it's, co it's extremely complicated. Yeah, I mean, it's the paraphrased Churchill about the Soviet Union. It's a riddle wrapped in enigma inside a mystery. When you go into an embassy, you expect that to be a sanctuary. And we're living in 2018, not the medieval period where you draw and quarter bodies. So that's sh stunning and shocking. But on the other hand, uh, and also Mr. Khashoggi was a U.S. resident. He went to U University of the United States. He, he wrote op-eds. So there was a lot of drama to this. But on the other hand, uh, a lot of our shock has been, is it, we're not shocked by what Saudi Arabia does. It's embedded with our relationship yeah. with Saudi Arabia. That said, what we're worried about in geostrategic terms is we've had an alignment now with the Gulf monarchies, the moderate Arab states, Israel, believe it or not, to confront the existential threat of a nuclear Iran and its terrorist appendages like Hezbollah or, or Hamas or people in Syria. So we don't want to jeopardize that, that new alignment. Yeah, and yet 
we don't want to condone it's, it. And I think Trump is yeah. trying to square that circle. It's very difficult to do. It's a, it's a balancing act, uh, VDH, and the, and the president's trying to do it. It's not easy. Yeah, but the idea is. that he can be blamed, but Richard Haas is like, well, at some point, an amoral no. foreign policy becomes an immoral foreign policy. U.S. foreign policy under Trump has reached such a point. Uh, I won't even, we won't even bother with that. But the Council on Foreign Relations is not exactly, I think, speaking for most Americans. Um, uh, thank you so much, Victor. We really appreciate it. <laughs>